Hi folks, Paul Boland here and welcome to the third vlog for Home Sweet Home. This time we're going to look at the rooms. Let's begin. In the previous vlog, you saw the house being built level by level. Walls being put in, doorways, etc, etc, until we were left with basically a house with white walls and floors and it was ready to be coloured, painted and filled with furnishings in order to make it the house it's going to be. So, this was a big task. Basically, every room required a set number of furnishings and pieces in order to make the room be what it was supposed to be. For example, a kitchen needs a sink, needs presses, needs a cooker, fridge, etc. etc. Living room would need a settee, TV, uh, stuff like that. Uh, bathrooms need a toilet, a sink, bathtub, so on and so forth. Every one of these objects had to be created and then positioned into the house this took a long time to do basically the way I worked this was first I referenced the script for the story and any specific object that the script referenced I I then created that and that went into the house once the script specific objects were in the house it was then time to populate the rest of the house with fixtures and furnishings in order to make the house look lived in and not just have oh this is a game object you're going to be using this in the game so this is here and nothing else <laughs> no the house the house is full of objects it took it took a few months to do this at the end i ended up with the house being populated with all the objects needed for the script plus the objects to make the house looked, look lived in. It's actually really good. Uh, I'm very, very happy with it, I have to say. The house really does look more alive with the fixtures, fittings and furnishings in it. So as you can see here, here is the hall, which initially was just a white shell. And then after fixtures, fittings and furnishings were put in, it became more alive, more lived in. The same here for the living room. As you can see here, it is just an empty shell when it was originally created. But once the fixtures, furnishings and fittings were put in, it became a more lived in environment. The entire house is filled with fixtures, furnishings and fittings that make it like this and it's it looks it really does look the part it really does i did receive some feedback on vlog two the previous vlog and a question cropped up now unfortunately i can't quote the person who asked the question because they took the question back down <laughs> um basically they put the question up i corresponded with them through comments responding to their question and you know I, I'm all for user Q&A you got a question about the game or any of my software just ask you'll get a response but in relation to home sweet home because I'm working on it at the moment if you ask a question I'll answer it here in one of these vlogs so the question was how can you be doing CGI for 20 years and for this game to look so terrible it looks like something from 1995 it's always good to get feedback, folks, be it good or bad. It would have been nice if the very first question about the game had been a, a positive one. I was a little disappointed to see <laughs> that the first question was taking a pot shot at the look and feel of the game. But there is a, an answer to it. And I, as I said, I already corresponded with the person on this, but I will answer it here too. The original plans for the house for Home Sweet Home was not the block house that you see in the game at the moment. It was a much more gothic house. This changed for one simple reason. Render times. Everything in the house has to be rendered. Every scene, every frame of animation needs to be rendered in order to create 
the animations and looks and still shots of the house and the game and everything that goes on in there. What rendering does, for those who don't know, is basically you create 3D models of your house, your objects, etc, etc. You put lighting in, shadows, etc. come from that. You've also got reflections, refraction, transparencies in relation to glass and metal. It's, it's a lot of information to build up a scene. You then take all that information and you press the render button and your 3D software, which was Lightwave 3D 2015, is what this game has been made in. It takes all that information and for every frame of animation or every static frame of the game, it takes that information and it, it basically calculates it all, combines it together and creates the, the still image. In the case of a static screenshot of the house, such as an interactive point, it's just a single frame being rendered. I render that frame, I take it into Fusion where I'm making the game, click Team Fusion where I'm making the game, and it's, it's added in. In the case of animations such as moving around the house and interacting with elements in the house, my animations are done at 25 frames per second. So that means for one second of animation, I have to create 25 frames. 25 frames have to be rendered out. One second, 25 frames. 10 seconds, 250 frames. And that's how it goes. It, it's multiples of 25 based on what's happening on the screen. If you look at this screenshot here, which shows the entire populated house with all its fixtures, fittings, and furnishings in it in wireframe mode, there is almost two million polygons there and it takes a long time to render folks as a matter of fact depending on what's on screen your render time per frame can be anything from a few seconds to a few minutes to in the case of really high level cgi a few hours per frame perhaps even a few days per frame in my case I'm averaging 10 minutes per frame. So think about that. One frame, one still image, takes me about 10 minutes to render it out. If I'm doing, since I'm doing animations at 25 frames per second, it means I need 25 frames for one second of animation. At 10 minutes a frame, in an hour, one hour of real time, I am rendering six frames. I need 25 frames to create one second of animation, so it takes me four hours, at six frames an hour, it takes me four hours to render 25 frames. So in other words, it takes me four hours to render one second of animation. That is very slow going, folks. With this house being populated with so many fixtures, fittings, and furnishings, there's a lot to render each frame. And, you know, at, at four hours for one second of animation, it's gonna take me a long time to make this game. It really is. Already a lot of work has been done, but there's a lot more still to go. So, to answer the question, how have you been doing CGI for 20 years? And yet the game looks so terrible. It looks like something from 1995. Could I have created a better house? Yes, I could. The original paperwork for the game called for a more gothic house. I had to scale that back for one reason, and that was render times. I have to put a line in the sand somewhere to say, this is how much time I'm willing to give to each frame of render, to each frame to be rendered. Where do I put that line? As I said, four hours of render time to create one second of animation, that's a lot of rendering. That's going to take a long time to, to, to make this entire game. So the Gothic house had to be scaled back to a more natural, simplistic house. Would I have liked to have done the Gothic house I had originally planned? Yeah, of course I would. Of course I would. But I don't have a epic computer. My computer is 10 years old. 
so I have to work with what I have. I have to work with what I have. And what I have is churning out renders at approximately 10 minutes per frame. And that's, that's, that's why the, the level of detail, the level of quality, etc. had to be pulled back on it. But at the end of the day, I know I haven't shown any animation work from this game yet in these vlogs. And they w it will come. It will come. Keep watching, folks. But I have seen the animation work. And to be exploring this house, it, it is a joy to walk around it and interact with the elements and see the supernatural elements starting to take place. So it is it is shaping up well. I'm the creator. I'm not gonna say it's not, <laughs> but it is. It is shaping up well, but it's shaping up well very slowly. And that's, that's why the house looks the way it looks. If I had a supercomputer or a render farm, yeah, I, I, I even spoke to family and friends about redoing this game after I got this this question I was like perhaps I should do the original plan create the gothic house go for the big story but a lot of work has been done at the time and I did give this question a lot of consideration but at the end I decided no just keep going what you're going with because otherwise how long is it going to take to put this game out home sweet home is aiming for release sometime in 2021 but if I go back to square one, i.e. scratch all the work that's been done and remake the house to the one that I wanted originally, that's gonna push the, the release date back to who knows when. Because at 10 minutes per frame with the house as it currently looks, I can only imagine what the full on gothic house I originally envisioned would mean to render times. So that's it folks. That's it for this week. I do appreciate the question, and I appreciate any questions, good or bad. So if you want to pop a question into uh, the comments below, you'll get a textual response from me down there, and you'll also get a video response in the next vlog. As for the next vlog, folks, well, the next vlog I'm going to talk about the atmosphere in the house. You've seen the house now with some furnishings in it. I want to talk about lighting, how the house is lit, how it creates the atmosphere in the house, and some terrible issues I encountered with Lightwave 2015's lighting engine, which I came to realize is, is not that good. But we'll discuss that next time, folks. So, till next time, bye.